Good evening. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. It's a... Uh, I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt because it's hot as fuck in the Philippines. But yeah, it's still a very... It's a very pleasant Saturday. Cheers to that. <laughs> yeah, somebody messaged me. Oh. Hmm. I'm always drinking on this program. There's always something wrong. There's always something yeah. wrong. Okay, we got it. All right, thank you guys for letting me know there's no sounds. There All right, we're, we got this. We got it figured out. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do my intro So I think again. you have to do your spiel again. I am. I'm doing my intro again. <laughs> Fuck it. All right. Starting over. Intro. Cut. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Puttas Weekly. We are live today, Saturday, June 27th. It is a great day not to get infected by coronavirus. In addition to this program, Puttas Inc. also has a blog that is updated several times a week. Simply go to puttasinc.org to read the blog. There you can also donate to our organization. If you are willing and able to provide a donation, please go to patreon.com slash Inc. and become a supporter of our program. This is a call-in show. You can visit the link on the screen right here. It says uh, uh, bit.ly slash call. And we have also LGBT bus pride march going into late tonight with Reggie Passion as its leader. You should go check that out on Facebook. Okay, there we go. I think <laughs> I think that covers the intro. Yeah, you got it. Oh, and John Joe is here. You got it. You got it. You got John Joe here. All right. Woohoo! Sorry about that, Say everybody. Hi a second time. <laughs> Sometimes just stuff All right, happens. All right, so... <laughs> yeah, and technical difficulties have actually been happening more often than not. Um, a lot of people have been complaining about their internet being slower than usual. Right. So I think that's just IFPs adjusting to the demand. Yeah. So many people are working from home now. Yes. That's yeah, a crazy. lot of people are. Um, so today's all right, topic. So what are we going to be discussing today? Today's topic is all about debating. Um so there's a couple of reasons for this topic. I'm going to talk briefly about my history with debating and then go over a little bit more about debates in general. And we have somebody who may call in to discuss a debate that he just finished uh, like last week, I think it was. So mm -hmm. debating is, I think, a very important way to exchange ideas. And I think that the rise of the debates of atheists versus religions uh, of various stripes was probably one of the greatest feats of modern era um, in terms of an intellectual discourse. Um, I'm convinced that if we weren't allowed to do that, if we weren't allowed to debate, that a lot of people would still be stuck in this religious mindset and atheism wouldn't be as prominent as it is now. Um, because a lot of what I came away with from my lack of belief uh, how I got to that was largely from listening to really interesting debates uh, between two people who were very knowledgeable on both sides and just yeah. making up my own mind. And I don't know about you if you would agree with that, but that's kind of where I'm at for what a debate it means to me <laughs> in that sense. Well, in the, re in the recent years, it's actually improved compared to, well, the online arguments in the past. Like, uh, I remember us back in the day where it's just arguing it's not debating and no one was tackling point per point and now it's nice seeing all these debate forums and yes. you know even threads that are properly moderated i think that's the way to go and that's when it becomes friendlier and more uh i think the word would be charismatic about the whole yeah. thing you know it's balanced uh i i just remember yeah, back in the day, people would, would, like maybe a decade ago, people would argue, just argue and get pissed off at each other. Yeah. But eventually, the, the, nice, the, the nice discussions would be on personal messages. It wouldn't be in forums. Because in forums, it would always be a pissing contest. And everyone's, I always mention this, the whole gotcha. Everyone wants to win that game. So it's nice now that it's structured, it's organized, and people are making an effort to make it civil. Yes, I, I, I'm enjoying I think that's it, important. You know? I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I agree. I think that's really important to mm. be to be as civil as possible in a formal debate. I wouldn't necessarily apply that rule to shows like this or to one on one discussions necessarily, although I tend to start out with civil discussion. But um, so I think I think we would all pretty much to some extent agree as to the importance of debates. I think that there are good reasons for some people not to engage in debate. And I would say, for example, I don't expect prominent scientists to go around debating creationists because I feel like that would be counterproductive. Um, 
because they could just be going and focusing on the science and not giving credence to these people. So I think it's more important that we lay atheists mm -hmm. are the ones that are engaging with these people. Um, yeah, I think it was uh, that time that Ken Ham and Bill Nye had a debate. Yes, where a lot of a lot of atheists even said that why, why are you wasting your time? I believe it was uh, Neil deGrasse who said that it's it's not really you know in his agenda, and I think it was also Dawkins who said that he's not going to waste his time because he's done it for years and. It's basically the same recycled argument. So I guess yeah. educated people find it, you know, a waste. Uh, except for the Oxford ones. The Oxford debates are pretty, pretty good. I think the, oh well, yeah. I think the only reason I really like the Bill Nye debating thing is because he's not really, kind of like Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's not really a scientist anymore, like practicing. He's more of a public speaker of science. So it makes sense for yes. him to engage in debate. Not that he doesn't do science or doesn't oh. know science or anything. I'm not trying to insult Bill Nye, but um, most of real, he's not out there like collecting Nobel prizes and stuff for new discoveries in cosmology. He's informing us as to what science is discovering um, yeah. over the, over the uh, centuries or whatever. So I have a methodology when I go about a debate and it's one that I'm still refining as I do this. And this is kind of what I wanted to briefly touch on. So I had my first debate ever last year. And, it, well, okay, I had my first formal debate with a religious scholar last year. I've had other debates online and, and on camera and stuff like that, and but just never a formal debate with a Christian theist uh, of this type uh, scholar. So um, uh -huh. what I did is I prepared these sheets, and anybody can create these. These are really easy. These have uh, some columns on them. And these are my notes, actually, from the debate. I kept them because I think it's cool. So... What I have is three columns, one that says negated, affirmative, and very important. So what you do is you have your opening statements, right? And then when you're listening to the opening statements of the opponent, uh, you write down things that he said that were negations. You write things down that he said that were affirmative. And then in the very important category, you write down things that you really need to respond to specifically. So this allows you to have like a little layout, a quick reference. And that's why the, that's why it looks like chicken scratch. You can barely read any of that because uh, it's basically just writing it down really fast. Just a quick note to yourself to go back and, and do, and then also have different pen colors and stuff like that. So I would recommend anybody who is doing debates do this, uh, have something like this, at least some way to take notes, even if it's not like a three column system like that. Um, but the reason I bring this up is because I'm going into another debate what? next week and uh, Arfell, one of our members, mm -hmm. just finished a debate last week. And there's just a lot more debates being scheduled now on Disco Penis. Penis? Penis? How do I say that? Penis? Yeah. I don't know how to Discourse. say it. Discourse. Discourse Penis. Oh, okay. Discourse Penis. Yeah. Discourse yeah, Pinas. All right, I got it. <laughs> yeah. um, so Discourse Pinas, uh, Discourse, Discourse so I don't know. It doesn't matter. They're having a, a lot of new debates. They're scheduling debates. I was supposed to have a second debate scheduled, but I've already turned that one down um, because of the person who I was talking to. But I'm expecting there to be a lot more, and I'm expecting the atheist community at large to be a lot more involved in that probably uh from probably from our page too so i just wanted to maybe give some advice to people so maybe you even john if you're have any questions for me that would help me kind of bounce off what you think people might want to know about debating and how to approach it if that would help me like launch ideas out but that's kind of where i'm starting from today okay. well what, what i've noticed um uh, when I first joined this program, we were we were being coerced to debate with particular Theus, the rock star Theus of Patas. But that's why there's there's a there's a right time and place for it. And I remember somebody even called you out during one episode to debate him. Um, it's it's all about the merits and the way you you I guess um. Uh, bring it forth, bring it forward. You know, when you present present your proposition and then you stick by it, there's no, you know, goal switching and all that. It's very, very organized. That's, that's the thing I like seeing about, well, I guess, foreign produced debates is that they're very organized. We're still in the infant stage of that, but I think we're getting there because one thing you can't take away is the bias mentality of the culture where it's it's a gang. 
you know, it's it's always a popularity thing. Like um, one time I was invited to debate, mm. but I had to go to the church. I had to go to where the service was. And I'm like, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to go there and be surrounded by the theists that I know will all be fucking outnumbered, whether we right. quote unquote win or not or make any points. At the end of the day, we're in enemy territory. I don't know. There has to be a level playing field for that. And I think online is very nice. And it's nice that some of the Theus uh, group organizers are actually communicating already with the Pata Seds and all that. That right. they, they all have this understanding that this course is the most important thing. That's why um, we mentioned in a few episodes that you don't talk about politics and religion with friends when you're drinking. But when you guys <laughs> decide to have that that conversation, then, you know, there's no emotion, emotional attachment. It's just, you know, we're just really going to lay down the facts and, you know, take it one step at a time. And one, one thing about debates, though, I think I have to warn some atheists is or non-believers or even agnostics, is that this is, this is grounds. This is where theists find ways to say that atheists or non-believers are assholes. You know, this this is where they find that. It's like, oh, you know, this guy said this and that. But it was in a formal debate. And it's not attacking the person personally. It's attacking the idea. Because ideas are not free from ridicule or scrutiny. You know, sometimes we forget. Um, a lot of atheists also do ad hominems. They attack the person's character, his appearance. Or they even go through their profiles and find garbage that they've said in the past. It's like it's like the call out culture, but in a smaller vacuum where it's just really a religious argument. It's not a debate. Right. And I've had a lot of conversations that delve into that. Uh, I don't really like hashing all, all the conversations I've had because they're just so they melt together after a while. They just sort of blend into one long argument. But it's like <laughs> I, I've had so many arguments where people will like attack Darwin's character for being a racist or whatever is that if the, as if that debunks the science of evolution or something. Uh, and I, and I just can't understand yeah. why people think that way. It really confuses me. Um, I, maybe you have thoughts, but I, I don't know why people think that attacking someone's character means that what they said is wrong. It's like, if I have a, a serial killer rapist come up to me and say one plus one is two, I'm going to have to acknowledge that. Yeah. One plus one equals two. I, 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 it's not wrong because a serial rapist said it. He's still a shitty person, but one plus one definitely equals two. He's right about that. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, yeah, I, it's like, uh, Remember Project Paperclip, where they got Nazis to help basically get uh, people on the moon and stuff like that? Like, you know, their character does not take away the, what you call this, the accomplishments that they're able to do. Like, it's also applicable. Yeah. Exactly. Or even comedians. Comedians who've done terrific shows who are getting called out now. You know, they have humor. Uh, a lot of us grew up to it. And the, the comedy is timeless, but when the person becomes, oh, he's a bad person, oh, he's all of a sudden, all their work, all the good stuff or inspiration that they did during their performances or their shows kind of gets erased, which is a little bit unfair to some degree. Like so many inventors, so many inventors were... Um, I, I'm not going to say deranged. We're troubled. They're troubled individuals. In fact, you can even go back to Greece or to, you know, way, way, way back where some of them were abusing boys. But their contributions to humanity and to the sciences, especially mathematics, you know, it trumps who they are as a person. Because that's why you can you can pick on them as a person. You can tell say that they're pieces of shit. But that doesn't take away their accomplishments. Yeah, I definitely. I, I can't agree with that more. Obviously, it's it's literally a logical fallacy. It's what's it's called an ad hominem fallacy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, you know this, but um, uh, so my debate topic next week. Uh, let me see if I can find the exact topic. I want to make sure I say it right. Um, so I have it saved here as a document. 
Yeah, let's go through your notes. <laughs> oh no, we're not doing that. Contribute anything to your notes. No, no, I don't think we're doing that. No, do you do you really want to do that? I don't know if that's that's worth going through. So it's um, is belief supported by reason? Belief in God supported by reason? Hmm. Is belief in God supported by? That's reason? a very interesting one. Yeah, we went through a lot of different debate topics, and I ended up settling with that one. I was like, yes, I'm okay with that one. Uh, it's that's that's the thing I have to caution people against too is just agreeing to a debate topic willy nilly. Um, that's something that's really important. That that's really really important. That the debate topic is something that you either agree with or disagree with, and there's not too much vagary involved to where you have to where it can be construed. Like if we say is belief in God supported by a reason. Well, then, yeah, I would have to say, I believe in God is supported by a reason. It's not a good reason, but it's a reason. But what we're talking about is reason, which is not mm. a reason. It's a process, the process of reasoning. So that's one of the th sticking points that I'm going to define clearly is that belief in God is not supported by a reason. It's supported by reason. It's not supported by reason. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Because that's what I was going to actually say that reason is, um, right. it could be subjective also that the reason I'm doing this is because the reason that person doing that is because the term is because, you know, mm. it it changes. Um, because once you add value to that is because, because this is because yeah. good intentions equals. And I have to be, you know, a good response. I have to be very careful. Not to let them do equivocation fallacies like that. That is an equivocation fallacy to say, here is a reason, as opposed to this is reason, as in the process of logical inference, um, which is completely different. That's objective. Oh, that is not subjective. I, yeah, I think you're going to you're going to go against a wall of good intentions. You know, good intentions are always used no. to push agendas. Well, we it's get, like yes, it's, you know, yes. you know the the story, anyway. the story of the of the dog that brings you know the dog loves to play fetch. Yeah. Now the dog the dog can bring you a live hand grenade that it finds in the ground. Its <laughs> intentions were good because you were playing fetch. Right. But you know the result is not. That's why you can have so many good intentions, but it does not mean that the result is good. Yeah, what was that horrible people... horrible movie? Oh, Jurassic Park three. Uh, a lot of the worst intentions or a lot of the worst things in the world, atrocities in the world have been committed by the best of intentions. That's what it is. So uh, Alan, Alan Grant said that <laughs> in, in possibly the worst of the Jurassic Park series. Um, <laughs> sorry, Jurassic Park fans. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, we grew up with that. We grew up to, Hey, the first one is amazing. I'm not gonna, I still get goosebumps when I watch mm -hmm. that one. Um, music and everything, but, uh, when it comes to the second one, it's like, eh. Third one is, oh my gosh, what the hell movie is this? Um, I don't know. Yep. <laughs> but this isn't a talk a about That's Jurassic a Park. <laughs> Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah. but it will be. It will be soon. Um, I, I saw a post on Apatas. Somebody shared that there's going to be this awesome, it's not a debate. It's. I think it features 10 creationist speakers. Did you see that post? No, I didn't see that one. Oh, uh, there's, there's this post of uh, unfortunately, Ray Comfort isn't part of it, but yeah. everyone was um, this. Everyone was commenting on topic number one: the banana, the atheist worst nightmare. And I'm, I'm in banana outfit. But yeah, uh, I'm actually curious to watch that. I think we should watch that and then do a reaction episode. But I think you have to pay to watch. If anyone can <laughs> link us in the comments, please, please, please let us know. So there's this big creationist. Um, I, 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 symposium or online talk, and they're going to be discussing the evils of evolution. Oh no! I don't know the if it's evils true, of I science. Oh gosh! <laughs> yeah. Um, that was another debate which they will I be using. They will be using science. Mm. One of one of the other debates yeah, I almost agreed to, but I refused. Will, will come was, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't. I didn't realize you cut out for a second on my end, or at least I think you did. Oh, um, it's just the usual when it comes to science is that uh, the argument will be using science against science or saying that there is science in the Bible or 
science proves whatever belief that they have. Yeah, this That's is always a, the, the cornerstone of that debate, that type. This is something we're not going to solve it? on the show probably ever. But um, one of the things that happened with me uh, recently, and this is something that I was going to do. I was, I was going to agree to this debate, which was uh, the topic was let me pull it up. Let me just pull it up so I don't fuck it up again. All right. <laughs> um, ah, here it is. Does Fezzer's or Fezzer's Aristotelian proof prove the existence, successfully prove the existence of a God? And um, I ended up talking in great length to Mark, I think it is, who was the opponent that I was going to have. And we didn't end up agreeing. And I found that he was just a little bit too dishonest for me to engage in a debate with. So I decided to call off the debate. Um he thought I was just making an excuse not to debate him as if that is uh, as if I need an excuse. I could just not want to. And that's good enough. But um, <laughs> uh, my reason was very simple. Uh, he it, it broke down to um, here's an objection to this premise. Here's an objection to this premise. And then once he started trying to justify one of these premises, we went down this rationalization ad hoc just treasure trove of just continually building to just support one premise and just fail, yeah. fail, 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 move the goalpost, fail, ad hoc rationalization. And then we got to the point where it's just, well, you're never going to accept any argument because you have this empirical scientism worldview that is inherently incoherent and self-referential. And so what he literally mm. said in that sentence is that requiring evidence and operating under the guise of observation, testing, repeating, and falsification is not reliable. And I thought that was one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. That's literally what he said. He, he does not think that requiring empirical evidence should be uh, required. He thinks that's irrational. Um, mm. he thinks that we okay. should only have to, that a logical argument should be enough. That's it. And I demonstrated why that's false by telling him all men from Italy are, are green. Bill is from Italy. Therefore, Bill is green. There's no fallacy in my argument there. It's, uh, it's a false premise. It has not been demonstrated to be true in reality. And that's where you need empirical evidence and data. And the issue that we ran into was just he, that he would not understand or agree to that that notion. So it got uh, very awkward. <laughs> but at a certain point, I just decided I'm I'm going to call off the debate. Uh, so it looks like we, we lost your camera, John. So if you want to bring your camera back, kind of kind of lost you here. Yeah, come on back, John. We miss you. John, are you with us? Yeah, I can't. I can't hear you. Still, I'm sorry. It might be. A, it might be my end. It might be your end. I'm not sure. I'm still not wired. I'm still on 4G. So it it may be me. I doubt it, though. I don't know. <laughs> the stream that looks works. smooth. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm just not getting you. I'm gonna turn off my camera here. Let's see if that helps, but probably won't. All right. Uh, while we're waiting for John, I'm going to just put you on a little, John, for a moment while I uh, talk to myself for a minute. And when I see you pop back in, I will bring you back. So um, essentially, guys, uh, what we're talking about here is the process of learning to debate. Um, one of the first things that I do when I'm formulating against a debate topic, first of all, I want to make sure that when I read that debate topic, that the question that I'm reading makes sense to me and I at least have a rudimentary understanding of the question and how to answer it. And then what I'm going to do as because this is a formal philosophical discussion is I'm going to break down each of the primary words in the question to explain what I think they mean or perhaps what they mean in the context of this debate to me and then uh, explain um, a few points along those lines with each word uh, and their definition or usage uh, that I'm providing. Uh, of course, the opponent will provide probably their own definitions. Uh, as far as the definition of God, I uh, in the debate, for example, I don't give a clear, here's my definition of God, because atheists don't define gods and say they don't exist. Atheists are just uh, responding to claims that gods do exist, and that's one of the points that I make. 
Um, and I also, I also just say that I would be okay with any definition along a similar lines of a classical theistic omni god, you know, the omniscient, omnipotent, uh, omni, 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 <laughs> omni benevolent god. There we go. Uh, so any god like that would be a sufficient definition for me. I wouldn't accept something like my god is a Coke can or my god is this coffee cup or whatever, or my god is this mug. To me, that's just uh, playing with labels. So uh, that's kind of what you have to do in a debate like that is to be very deliberate about your words and be very uh, structured with how you're defining things so that you can have a very clear discussion so that later on your opponent isn't able to create equivocation fallacies, or if they do, you can at least call it out very quickly and say, no, 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 this is what we discussed as to the definition of this word. This is what we discussed as the definition of this word. And so you're, you're now equivocating, you're, you're changing the definition. Um, so it's, it's a little bit um, difficult. You do have to you know, be able to break things down um, to a very deep level. And it helps to listen to other people. Go listen to a few people talk about that specific, specific topic, get to take some notes, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I, I think we might have uh, John back. John, are you back with us? Yep, yep, I'm here. Awesome. Welcome back. We missed you. Okay, good. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, internet's really been wonky. I apologize for that. But yeah, um, what, what I normally, uh, what I observe in some debates that I've actually sat through, maybe one fourth of them, is that it's uh, it's parroting former arguments, or you know, there are YouTube videos how to beat an atheist in a debate, and then they bring up one point. Yeah. And then they stress it out and they can't expound over that. And that's what I've been noticing with uh, a couple of people, even in the Patas forum, is that they're basically parroting um, a past argument and just recycling it and re re refurbishing it as if it was their own argument. That's right. why I believe some things get mad at me when, when I ask them some stuff on a personal level, when I ask them about their, their decisions in life or their humanity. That's when... It's not public. It's pers It's a personal conversation, and when I ask them about the decisions that they make in life, um, not not ex well, it's uh, LGBT month and all that. And when when I bring that up with them, and then their their homophobia comes out, their irrational hate for a particular group of people come out, and they kind of see it, and they're like, oh shit, <laughs> and then they kind of dislodge. They they press the eject button. And jump to another topic when I'm not calling them out. I'm just asking them on, you know, their 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 preferences or what do they think about this? If you believe X, why are you behaving Y? Sorry, I don't I'm know. Just, I'm just but thinking. that's on the personal. It's it's yeah, on a yeah. personal level. Like some 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 guy once debated me and he got really, really well, not debated, argued with me. And it came to the point that he told me he'll punch me for Jesus. He'll beat me <laughs> up for Christ. And I told him how that that was one of the weirdest things. Like I couldn't tell if he was joking or not because he was an acquaintance. But he, it came to the point that his his um, his points failed at most parts and us being nice to it. And he just said, you know what, I'm just going to prove myself. And I'll, I'll I'll beat you up for Jesus. And I told him, you know how weird that sounds. I it will fight for Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Because Jesus is too weak to fight on his own. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's why. If uh, if your God is super omnipotent and all knowing and all that, why do you have to resort to violence? Yeah, and why that is it necessary for you to do think. that? Why can't he come down here and punch yeah. me for for him? Or why would a god be so petty in the first place that he's so offended that an that an atheist doesn't believe in him because he hasn't provided enough evidence? I don't know. It's just really bizarre. Mm -hmm. And wh what you mentioned before, before we go too far down the rabbit hole, and I forget what I was going to say. Um, mm -hmm. You're talking about rehashing these arguments or re reconstructing, or perhaps mm -hmm. um, what was it? Um, Sometimes it's just simple rewording. That's rewording. They, they present yeah. it. Well, yeah. what I what I find particularly interesting about that is that usually when that happens, the original objection um, is not resolved. 
Uh, like with the Aristotelian yeah. proof, you have Arist- Aristotle's version, and then you have now there's a bunch of different versions. But we have, let's say, the one that's popular is Fezer, uh, Fezer, Edward Fezer, Edward Fezer, whatever. Um, sorry, Edward, if you're listening, you're probably not. So <laughs> the um, the argument is essentially the same, but the objection to the argument originally, and it still is for me, is we can't demonstrate in reality that prime matter or a purely actual actualizer is real and phaser's argument doesn't fix that objection or that problem all it does is reword some stuff to sound more contemporary it hasn't changed the the format of the formal uh, structure of the argument hasn't really changed Uh, it has added some stuff to it like uh going on to describe a very specific god um which Aristotle didn't really do in his um, original argument. Uh, but mm. all of that, of course, is, again, just bald assertions. They're just bare assertions. And one of my, my biggest objections to this is that uh, from premise 14 onward of Phaser's argument, um, it's literally just a series of assertions. There's, <laughs> there's no demonstration anywhere. And then every response that I get from a theist on this is, oh, no, no, it follows logically from the previous premises, and the evidence is that change happens. So the evidence okay, so for... Is his, <sighs> it's just his argument. His argument becomes the basis for everything. Yeah. Because he's supposed to be knowledgeable in that particular... The, the basis See, for everything... Well, well, the basis for everything in the argument is... Um, change is a real feature of the world. Premise one is used as the evidence for the entire argument. That's the that's the empirical evidence that they point to. Um, and I don't know about you, but I find that remarkably stupid um, because it doesn't logically follow that a god is necessarily all knowing, all good, all this, all that. It doesn't necessarily follow that. Uh, um, there is no infinite regress. Like, and this isn't something that logically follows from premise one that changes a real feature of the universe or changes a real feature of the world. I, I don't know how you could possibly get to that from there. I just really don't. And I've struggled to try to explain that objection to the theists who I'm discussing this with because they keep saying, no, no, it logically follows from that premise. I just don't get it. Um, and I tried to explain, no, every premise needs its own evidence. Every single premise needs to be demonstrated on its own. That's the way a logical argument works. True premises lead to true conclusions. They can't simply logically follow. Even in the example that I gave, which was just two premises, all men from Italy are green. Bill is from Italy. Therefore, Bill is green. Even if we demonstrated premise one, all men from Italy are green, you still haven't demonstrated that Bill is from Italy. So it doesn't logically follow that Bill is green. Um, you'd, you'd have to demonstrate that Bill is from Italy and all people from Italy are green. You have to demonstrate both premises are true. Um, but, but they're not arguing that religion changes, are they? Do they argue that, that religion is changing, but it's still the truth? Because if they say that, that means religion evolves. Oh, yeah. There's, the argument is that God is changeless, uh, which we, that was what we had mm. talked about when Arvind called in. That was one of the things we had discussed. How could something changeless do anything? Uh, so we have a couple of comments here, and we do have one caller on the line. Uh, so I want to try to get to Ooh. that one. So we have um, – your camera's going crazy again, by the way. So <laughs> uh, We have – in debates with Christians, I usually go and point out that their God is evil using their Bible, since debating about existence of their God ends up going in circles in my experience. I have the same problem with debating about the – uh, evilness of their God, because I go in just as many circles with that. But I could definitely see that being valuable. I love to bring up uh, the slavery in the Bible and stuff like that. <laughs> it's always fun, especially for those who yep. have never never paid attention to it and don't know about it. But uh, we have on the line, uh, let's see if I can pull him in here. Can I pull him in? Nope, he, he disappeared. All right, never mind. We don't have anybody on the line. We okay. did have somebody, and they vanished. 
<laughs> call back in, uh, get back on the Discord, and uh, we will drag you into the room to talk to us, Reggie. Yeah, because we're, we're friendly kissed. We're not going to gang up on you. and oh, just, We want to learn also. We want to know. It's just Reggie. We want to know how you feel about certain <laughs> topics, you know? Yeah, uh, you mentioned stuff about, like, how... how I, I, I've stopped pointing out the, the, the evils of God and... If God is in charge of everything, then evil is also his doing. And right. Satan's job is to, to torture the nurse. I always just ask, uh, well, that's why. We talked about the why do atheists post memes. I always just ask, like, why are there no cats in the Bible? Right. I don't see cats. But then in Egyptian uh, history, you see a lot of cats. But come on, man. I'm a cat lover. If you're a cat lover, <laughs> give me a thumbs up. I like some cats. We I love a, a cat. I had a cat and it didn't work out. Dude, we but, have, um, I, I have seven. I'm a cat daddy. <laughs> you might want to reset your camera again. Um, or whatever it is you've been doing. But uh, I think we have on the line now Reggie. Reggie passed. Hello. Hi, Benjamin. Me? Hey, Reggie, how you doing? Hi. Hi, I'm Reggie. fine. Happy Pride. Happy Pride hey, to you, too. Hey, Happy Pride. Hello, John. How are you? Hi, hi. Magandang, yeah. magandang gabi sa'yo, Marigo. Oo, uh, magandang gabi. <laughs> well, anyway, That's not fair. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Bench and Joe, for having me on your show. Yeah, what's and, going on? Uh, um, it's all of our show. We all belong here together. Yes, and thank you very much for at least giving me a space or a time for, you know, can we yeah, discuss Pride for a Oh, minute? yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, you can. Yeah. I'll, I will yeah, let you take the you reins. Know. You tell us what you want to say, and we will have a conversation <laughs> about it. Yes, yes, because, you know, uh, of course, we are in the time of pandemic, and uh, still, it's the Pride Month, and uh, what happened yesterday was really, uh, you know, it shut the whole LGBTQ plus community not only yeah. them, but of course the uh, uh, people who fights for civil rights equality and um, yeah, for you know we are <laughs> fucked up in this situation. Uh, yeah. I just would like to tell the uh, listeners that uh, we in the LGBTQ plus community supports the uh, detained uh, rally yesterday. And uh, we still do believe that they did not do anything wrong, even though that there is, uh, even though that uh, what they did was, uh, well, uh, from the point of view of other people, it's uh, in a violation of the, human rights. Uh, we heal as one act, you know? Yes. But they um, observed social distancing yesterday when they had their. Uh, March in Mendiola, so we support them. Actually, I think we should catch up. See Benjamin. Benjamin, uh, do you know what happened yesterday? Where uh, was it? I think twenty uh, rallies were arrested, and then two drivers and even media. Yes, yes. yes. No, I didn't hear about this. Uh, who was covering the? Who was, well, okay, Ben. You have to know that the, the military is there. Outfits. They even took the vehicles hmm. of the of the rallies. Why? It's it's kind of crazy, man. There are videos on Facebook that guys can check. Please for the incident today. Hey John, I'm having a hard time uh, making out what you're saying. You're breaking up quite a lot there. So I'm gonna pass it back over to Reggie for a moment. Uh, maybe you can reset your your computer or whatever. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> Reggie, you want to go on? Yeah, hello. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, go ahead. What Continue. John was trying to say was uh, there was this random arrests of people. Okay. Yeah, that's of what kind of people? Like LGBTQI plus people? Hello? It looks like I lost Reggie yeah. too. No, no, no. I'm still here. Oh, okay. Yes, because uh, yeah. Um, well, I, what I was asking Reggie is, uh, are you talking about they were arresting LGBTQI plus individuals, or just randomly arresting yeah, people were, in general? Uh, uh, detaining. Yeah, they detained twenty people. Yeah. 
rallyists. Oh. Why? Uh, yeah, because uh, according to them, um, this is not the time. Mm-hmm. It was uh, not following social distancing or basically rules of mass yeah, gatherings. We were, but can... uh, I was not there because, of course, we are stuck up in our home. But according to the Baghari officers, you know, because uh, the people who uh, marched mm-hmm. yesterday came from Baghari organization, okay? It is an LGBTQ plus community. And, well, they are allies with us, allies with LGBT bus. Mm. Now, people were saying that uh, they violated the We Heal As One Act because for the simple reason that they held their own Pride March at the time of the pandemic. Mm. But if the people would carefully see and watch the videos, okay, they were carefully... um, observing social distancing okay and yes according to john there were uh journalists uh, reporters that were arrested yes yeah. there were yeah so you know it, it um, was a random arrest and uh i do not know why uh it happened it was so uh, abrupt are they still mm-hmm. being detained or are they let go now? Yes, yes we are still detained. Still detained. And, okay. you know, we are raising funds uh, for these people so that at least they'll be able to uh, have their bail paid. Yeah. Um, I wonder, um, and this is just me, I'm, I'm just asking for, mostly for devil's advocate because I don't know enough about Philippine law, but do you think that they were right to be arrested or do you think that they were following guidelines no, or they not? they should not be arrested. Okay. Uh, because the, in the first place, you know, it violates the rights of a person. You know, when, if we are going to base it from the from our constitution, uh, you know, uh, we are going to talk about uh, self-expression. You know, and these are... I feel like uh, Reggie keeps cutting out too, but um, but um, um, videos prior to the quote unquote detention and arrest were showing they were observing social distancing. They were wearing their masks. They were, you know, following the guidelines because restaurants are open now. You can you can go to a restaurant. Yeah, no, I I don't disagree. I was just trying to figure out. Uh, I was trying I'm to give him something to, I'm to say. I'm having a difficulty <laughs> listening because uh, our voices, I think, are intertwined. I hear echoes. Uh, we're not uh, echoing on this end, so uh, it's okay over here. Uh, you can just mute us while you're talking for a moment, I guess. But um, yeah, I, I would actually agree. If they were following basic hygiene guidelines, wearing masks, um, what have you, staying a few feet apart from each other or whatever, I don't really have an objection to, the, to them. Uh, protesting or anything like that. I think that they should be allowed to do that. Uh, except when they're not. And that happened in the U.S. And that was when a lot of the conservatives were protesting against um, this thing. And then now there's been all kinds of protests from all kinds of people, mostly uh, extremists and people who are just and crazy anarchists and stuff like that who've been rioting in the streets who definitely aren't doing social distancing. Um, yeah. So there is... Um, there's a proper way to go about this, and I definitely agree that if they're following the rules or abiding by the guidelines, then I don't really have a problem with what they're doing. Uh, that's they, that's just me, but um, Reggie, I think you would agree, and John, I don't know where you went this time, but <laughs> I, I would uh, I would agree with that. I think they're welcome to have their opinion, and they should be allowed to go out and protest. So apparently there's another protest tonight. Is that right? Or March, at least? Is it a Pride yeah, Month? Uh, no, no. Uh, it's just that we are going to celebrate the Pride Month. Okay. So in our, from our part, from our organization, LGBT Bus, which is, of course, an uh, also an ally of PATAS, uh, we're going to be celebrating Pride by having a social event later. Right. And where can people join you on that? Or where, where can they find out more information about how to participate?
presumably I would think they just go to Facebook and type in LGBT bus and they would be able to find it. Is that right? Is that? Yeah, yeah, it's like that. And then I just uh, uh, spoke to some prominent leaders to just have their, uh, you know, Facebook Live, and I think that would suffice everything. Yeah, makes sense. And to me, uh, yeah. Yeah, so we are expecting some uh, performances from the uh, officers of Papa Slater at 2100 hours. It will start. Okay. Yeah. Richard, uh, our chairman, Richard, will be performing live. And so with Justin Minoru. So yeah, twenty one hundred hours is nine p.m. Yes, yes. Yeah, nine p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Sa mga hindi na di marunong mag military time. Yeah, yeah. Nine p.m. po. <laughs> nine p.m. today. Yes, right? yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's it, uh, Ben, John. Uh, again, we're inviting you later. The show starts at eight o'clock p.m at LGBT bus or Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Reggie, for calling in. We're so glad to hear from you again. Thank uh, you very always much. Always welcome. So, uh, yes, I'm expecting everyone to participate also in our live online Pride celebration. Thank Amazing. Thank you very much. I'll try to be there. I'm going to probably be pretty sleepy by that time, though, but I'll try to at least yeah. come thank in for you. a little bit. So thank you so much. Yeah. Um, If you can post the link in the comment section of the live, yeah, that would be terrific. Yeah, I so, will see if I can pull that up actually myself. Or maybe maybe uh, one of the moderators here can do it because I'm uh -huh. probably not going to be able to do it right now. So uh, where were we before that? I don't remember, but uh, maybe we can go on about uh, some more of this Pride stuff because I am a big fan of uh, marches. I like marches. I used to love the uh, Macy's Day parades and marching bands and all this stuff and just any excuse mm -hmm. to go out and march is amazing and the the uh, lgbtqi plus community does it better than anybody with their uh, wonderful decorations and big fat smiles on their faces it's just beautiful i love it uh they're all just so many good people that go out there and do this these marches uh, so <laughs> i i like marches i'm fascinated by them at the same time it's it's not like hooligan marching it's well organized and right responsible because there is there is an advocacy that's being done you know and at the same time you will always have those mm -hmm. anti-march or anti-protesters like um who was the famous one westboro baptist church oh gosh you know you you're to gonna have up. you're gonna have those guys yeah we we have local versions of that we definitely have local versions of the oh, westboro sure. baptist church I'm sure they're everywhere. Who are very aggressive. Right. Very, very aggressive in chastising other people, you know, based on their beliefs. And they even make it platforms for the debates. They want to debate people. But then you also have the the usual assholes who will just curse at people and not really have a point. But just, you know, literally curse and figuratively curse them i curse you it's your evil you know if only remember, god can judge you but i'm here in front of you to tell you that you're being judged by god if i remember isn't uh, west Pro baptist church mostly made up of lawyers that's and so they they know what the legal limits are for protesting and so they some they, of them yeah they bump right up against that line whenever they're protesting just very and careful a, a lot of indoctrination indoctrinated children a lot of them um yeah i could be no i'm no i'm not mistaken but i'm pretty i don't know what yeah, episode it was that. but there's there's a famous uh girl uh you can check it out in the joe rogan podcast if you google uh former westboro baptist church i think i know you're talking about girl or female yeah i forgot her name though but she, and she gives uh, the whole background of how they were raised how they were forced to pick it. Megan Phelps. How they were made to and there you go. Yeah, that's her. That's her. Yeah, she's a former member and spokesperson for WBC. And she uh was one that I actually really enjoyed. And then there's uh so, so it's essentially mostly the Phelps family, and a lot of them are um the lawyers or at least um study law. And mm -hmm. they're they're twisted people, to say the least. They are yeah. twisted. And I don't understand 
a lot of why they think the way they do, but I will say that their views are more in line with the Bible than most Christians that I've spoken to who just outright ignore some of the anti-gay stuff in the Bible. So while I'm not in support of their stupid beliefs, I'm at least acknowledging that their beliefs are closer, closer aligned to the book that the Christians like to tout around as the Word of God. So hopefully that doesn't convert more people over to Westboro Baptist Church by saying that, but uh, I think most people would <laughs> most people would know that that's you know immoral. So yeah, because we have we have local versions. Like, uh, did you ever hear the thing about um, what Manny Pacquiao said? Yeah. Our, our our very very dear dear Manny Pacquiao. He compared um, the I community can't tell if you're being with animals. <laughs> He compared the community with animals, that they're animals, and it's not natural for, you know, that sort of behavior. It's uh, oddly enough, uh, very recent since the pandemic, uh, our dear box who brings to the bench has been very, very quiet. So I'm just I'm just guessing here, John, you're cutting out again, but I'm just guessing that you don't actually think he's... Uh, a really nice, cool, awesome person, right? You don't think any of those things. <laughs> no. Um, yes. So, uh, so you're cutting out a little bit, but I think what you're what you were trying to say is um, he was saying that the homosexual communities or the gay communities are um, animals. Is that what you said? He compared them to animals. Oh. Um, I, w I would say that he's wrong, but he's not because we're all animals. I would say that his special distinction to refer to them as animals and in such an insulting way makes him a jackass. But, um, yeah, we are animals. I'll give him that. Um, I wouldn't say it's animalistic behavior per se in that sense. I would just say it's just behavior of, of humans. And certainly it's... Well, um, it's not there's unnatural because we're part of, of nature. There's a way, of, yeah, but there's a way of saying it in Tagalog. It's not animal, it's animal. With, with a hard L, animal. It, it reminds it's me because, of, uh, um, it reminds me of this Louis C.K. joke um, where he said it's, it's all about the emphasis that you put on the J when you say Jews. If you say Jewish people, that's fine, but if you say the Jews, and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's all about yeah. that, that that hard J, the Jews, yeah. Muslims, Christians, and Jews. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, that didn't turn that didn't turn well for him. Huh? I think right. just I could be wrong. I think it was four years ago. For yeah, I think it was about four years ago when he made that statement because when he was uh, fresh into politics. That was his thing. He was always bringing Bible verses and always using the Bible to make, you know, get the point, get the, the verse through the majority of views to agree with him. And it's basically, ah, I win because people love me. Yeah, I'm, you're cutting out again, John. Hopefully we can get this sorted out uh, for you. But, uh, um, The anti-gay stance on in Christianity and most religions really confuses me, and it and it continues to, and it probably will continue to. I don't understand where or why a god would give a shit about that. I really just don't understand it, and why uh, why it matters at all. Um, I, I really struggle to understand that point. Mm -hmm. That's something that oh, sticks God. with me. Even when I was a Christian, I never could understand why God was against homosexuality. I was against it because God was against it. That was all I knew. I could not understand what reasoning there would be. Now I understand there isn't any reasoning. But um, I just don't know what goes to their minds when they're thinking about this or what was going through their minds when they wrote this up the first time way back then, you know, back in the it's, back in the old days. It goes and people fear what they don't understand or when it's new to them. 
Sure, I could I could agree with that. Um, I'm not a very psychologically inclined person, which may be why I don't fully understand some of these weird human behavioral quirks. But uh, there's nothing unnatural about being gay. There's nothing unnatural about being um, trans or lesbian or anything else. It's all completely natural because it occurs within the realm of the natural. We are natural beings. We're a part of nature. So anything we do is natural. The only sense in which that might be potentially up for debate is if we're talking about um, artificial versus natural, which is a different distinction. Um, but in that case, uh, cars aren't natural and glasses aren't natural. Uh, houses aren't really natural. <laughs> like if you, It depends on where you're going to draw that line, and it's just so stupid to draw it right there at oh no no sleeping with a man as lies with another man that's that's not okay sleeping with a man as lies with a woman or whatever um that's that's uh that's where we draw the line for natural stuff everything else is fine you can make houses buckets you can make glasses cars you can make uh you know uh, <laughs> it's just it's it's really strange to me that somebody could say yeah. that that's not natural but i don't know I don't know. I'm annoyed by it, and it just frustrates me to think about. <laughs> because they, they become gatekeepers. Yeah. Yeah, they um, and that, they don't like it. That's, that's, that's where that's, tradition. That's where it didn't come in. That's why when we were talking about um, how atheists have trouble coming out families, and stuff, because they're all rooted on that particular ideology that. This is how things are, and this is how things are. Right. You know, they were ra- their grandparents, their parents were raised in a certain way, and this is it. This is natural. This is you know, the way God intended it. Right. But always feel, they always fail to see how things weren't that way, way, way back for them. Yeah. Things have changed. Yeah. Yeah, things, have, things always change, per the Aristotelian argument. Um <laughs> Everything is in a constant state of change. Um, And not a hierarchical one, because that is fiction. But um, I am convinced that things will continue to change in a good way in the future. I think that eventually we're going to start to see less and less of this anti-gay stance. Um, It's going to become more and more a taboo to act in an anti-gay way. It's already becoming more that way over the last 20 years. Um, and it's, I'd like to see it keep going that way. Uh, and I, when I say anti-gay, I'm talking about the, the re- the religions just call it, you know, these are homosexuals, these are gays, they, you know, trans, whatever. I'm talking about the whole community, LGBTQI plus. Um, so I don't want to sp- sp- pick one specific of those uh, letters, but, um, yeah, the, the entirety is, going to continue to get better for them, I think, over time as the world becomes less religious and less inclined to, as we become more familiar with who they are, I think. So it's, that's why it's important yeah. to go out and do these marches and to have these discussions, because like you said, people are afraid of what they don't know. So if we teach them about it, maybe they won't fear it anymore. So I don't know. Yeah. It's like this program. We're no, yeah. not all atheists are assholes. Right. <laughs> Only me. You tried to change that. <laughs> I'm reformed. Now you're a reformed yeah. asshole. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm partial. I'm... Yeah, I, I brought my yeah, book I'm... over. I got it somewhere here. My douchebagians. Let me get in here. Um, yeah, that's uh, in verse 17 of chapter four. Douchebagians says, uh, "Thou shalt always be an asshole." So that's what I got. There you go. <laughs> it is a requirement well, that, I, you, that I be an asshole. My God tells me to. You, you, you got to have some friends who will be able to speak the th- truth. I would rather be front stabbed than backstabbed. Fair enough. And some I, some people don't like that. Maybe it's just me, but I'd rather not be stabbed like, at all. But <laughs> well, because ev- everyone has errors, everyone has faults, yeah. and it's always nice to have that somebody to to put you in place, to to check you. Because sometimes you get lost. You get lost in whether it's ego, whether it's tradition, whether it's uh, a bias. And sometimes you need you need that 
that conversation with someone who just right basically open your eyes and make you think about it because when you act on emotion you don't really take a step back and breathe and think about it holistically <clears throat> so and once in a while it's nice to have that asshole friend who will tell you the frank friend yeah i always found that interesting that when you're honest with people that makes you an asshole it's like so why do my parents keep telling me not to lie when i'm growing up <laughs> Are they deliberately trying to make me into an asshole? Is like, is that what we're talking about? Um, I don't know. I no, no, don't be honest all the time. That's when we have to tell little white lies to spare people's feelings. Yeah, we don't want to be honest mm -hmm. all the time. We don't want to always tell people what we're thinking. That would be that would be anarchy. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So oh, we have uh, people knew. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was gonna say we have another caller on the line. Um, we have. I think he's here with us now. Denver from Manila wants to say clarification on the connection between the LGBTQI plus and the anti-terror bill. He is a deist. What's going on, Denver? What do you got for us today? Uh, hello. Hi. Yeah, I actually heard. Yeah, hi, 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 guys. Go ahead. So I'm watching earlier, and I heard about um, the call in earlier about the LGBTQ plus that were arrested yesterday. So, also, I'm following the discussion on that. I just want to confirm because I don't find their stand logical. I know this is debatable. However, mm -hmm. their stand, one of the placards that they are holding, it is saying, Bakla lesbiana, hindi terrorista. Um, like in an English term, gay and lesbian are not terrorists. And who labeled them in the first place? And following that is a drunk terror bill. Um, just to be clear, I'm against terror bills, so I want to jump it. Mm -hmm. However, who labeled them as terrorists? Why are they protesting against anti-terror bill with that banner? With that mm -hmm. actual banner that gay and lesbian not terrorists. And John? if you'll be checking section 4 to 12 of ATB, yeah, there I, is I, no mention of NK in there. Yeah, I, I saw I saw that that image that you're talking about. But I, I think it was this one placard. And you know how like sometimes in, in protests and in march marches, people try to come up with witty um pop culture or relevant issues and parang tying it on. Parang ano eh, parang you know I don't know. It's it's like a bad joke. Now, parang they tied the whole terrorist thing because obviously they have another agenda which was not directly involving the whole march. That's what parang it's it's parang calling the government out on other stuff as well. It's not just about the Pride March or representing the community, but adding that you know we're not terrorists because apparently everyone's being labeled as a terrorist now so i don't know i saw that one placard and i, I also i feel in denver i feel the same um my answer to the question yeah, is i don't actually know so i would suggest that maybe if you want to know why they're protesting the anti-terror bill that you go ask them on lgbt bus why they're protesting the anti-terror bill because I don't, I'm not an LGBT bus member. I'm not an LGBTQI plus member, although I am a supporter of those movements. Um, so I would definitely suggest you go ask them because I haven't a clue. And so I'm the wrong person to ask that question. To. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate you asking yeah. it. Uh, yeah. um, I think it's an important one. Um, yeah. Um, however, um, regarding protests, um, we know that there is red tagging that is happening right now as per general everyone is terrorist did you, did you say red did you say red tagging is that what you said where yeah. everyone, okay. everyone Sorry. against the government basically a terrorist got it got it yep okay yeah so i just couldn't barely hear him Go um ahead. us atheists atheists that are pushing forward separation of church and state sure. and holding banner like separation of church and state uh we both know that this will lead to a uh, some protests later on. Can ATs be flagged as terrorists? No. Hmm. That's not, not not for oh, that. If, 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 yeah. If we follow their logic, they'll label us as terrorists. But if you follow the law and the constitution, we're not. 
Uh, oh boy. Um, Does it, that, that, that's what that's what did to Carlos Celdran. He was basically a terrorist in the church because of his uh, his very very public protest. I, that's I guess, why he heard they couldn't they, oh, they couldn't tag him with uh, being a terrorist or you know flick harm or all that so what they did was emotional harm emotional mm. distress there's some pull with enough money you can charge anyone with anything yeah. if you don't like them yeah. it may not go through but you can definitely uh, take them to court but um i what i would say is anybody can label anybody as anything there's no restriction from them doing that but I, what i would say is that i would be really surprised if an atheist were to be prosecuted for supporting separation of church and state in a government where freedom of speech and freedom of religion is promoted by the constitutions, uh, um, mm -hmm. I'm speaking of at least two countries that I know of. I mean, I know there's more than that, but um, Philippines, the United States, both have that provision in the constitution of their countries. Um, and so that means that there is a freedom from religion as well, which is the separation, the, as Thomas Jefferson said, a, quote, wall of separation between religion and government. And that is um, what is implicitly implied by freedom of religion and freedom from religion, the freedom to practice and the freedom to not have your rights uh, infringed upon to either practice or not be subject to religious doctrines. So... Um, yeah, it's, you know who practices that well? Singapore. Yes. Singapore practices that very That's well. True. You're allowed to believe whatever you want to believe. South Korea's so pretty good about allowed... that too, aren't they? Isn't South Korea pretty good about oh, yeah, that? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So you're you're not allowed to to what you call this, uh Apple box to to talk in street corners and stuff like that. You're not supposed to be doing any of the activity. In fact, religion is taboo. Whatever you believe, just bad, leave it. But don't, you're not allowed to bring it out in the public, you know? And that's where I might object oh. um, a little bit. <laughs> uh, well, I, here I, in the Philippines, they've weaponized religion. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I know. And and they've done that in the U.S. They've done that in uh, the U.K. Um, they've done that in well, all the Islamic states, pretty much. So it's... It's a problem globally on a lot of in a lot of places where religion is mm -hmm. trying to take over. And the Philippines is probably a particularly bad case of that because the Catholic Church has way more power here than it does in most other countries. Um, even in the U.S. where the Catholic Church is pretty huge, it's not even the majority Christian religion, I don't think, anymore. And even Christianity itself is starting to be severely on the decline in the U.S., but not really here in the Philippines as much. So hopefully that increases with time, but that's kind of where we're at, I think. Anyway, hopefully we answered all your questions, Denver. I don't know if you had anything else for us. Uh, just one more follow-up question, but thank sure. you, by the way, for clarifying all of those. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people, uh, atheists in general, having debates um, I know that the topic right now is debate. Yes. And this is something that they are doing debates inside of the group. Some are pro, some are anti that bill itself. And we all know that there is no guidelines or principles that are set for ATs. But should ATs have a collective stand against the anti terrorist bill? Or it does not um, equate to that. Um, there's Sorry. No logic mm, you you, you, you okay. said, should atheists what? I couldn't hear you. You said, should atheists. Um, have a collective... a collective stand against an oh. bill. No. Yeah, um, no, there is no yeah. point in that right. Um, speaking as a media practitioner myself, and yeah, I do have licenses <laughs> to do that. Um, I, I have to say that the, the third bill is a little bit uh, construed for what it is. Basically, it's really against uh, the terrorists, but it's vaguely written that you know, if he says bad online or anything promotes communism or stuff like that, you can't get in trouble. Then again, there are public forums, there are opinion pieces, even in newspapers there are, and that doesn't fall under the terror bill. That's why I'm kind of 50-50 on it. I'm not scared because I always talk shit about the government, 
and very publicly. And I'm actually not scared of the terror bill. I just think it's a poorly worded and poorly marketed bill. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, restructure it, make it better. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by should atheists have a collective stance against this. I think what you mean is that. Um, is there a collective stance? Because I would say probably there is a, a sort of common atheist view on this, but it's not an atheist view per se. It's more of a humanist view or a skeptic's humanist view. Mm -hmm. um, atheism is obviously just lack of belief in a God. That's one of the sticking points for me whenever I hear somebody say that. And it's nothing against you, Denver. It's just uh, whenever I hear someone use atheists in a context where it doesn't belong, I always have to correct it. Say, no, that's that's a humanist point of view, or that's a secular point of view, or uh, that's mm -hmm. a uh, skeptical point of view. In this case, it's humanist and probably secular. So, Yeah, I um, wouldn't be worried until yeah. the government targets atheists, which they don't. Generally they don't, speaking. They don't target, hopefully. Yeah, they don't. So. Um, we're, still, we're still a minority, and we're in a safe environment. Once we start becoming political, and for example, get um, you get arrested during a protest, it just happens to be that you're an atheist. They can arrest you if you're a Muslim, if you're a Christian, if you're Mormon. It's not because of what you believe in or what you don't believe in. It's right. your actions or the the place and the time that they're. Yeah. Cool, Denver. You good? Yeah, yeah. So I have a, I have a question for you, Denver, uh, really quick, if you don't mind. Yeah. So the call screener said you're a deist. Why? Are, what do you would? Why are you a deist? Uh, actually, I answered this on my first call before in the first week. Did but you? I, I don't remember that. This, I'm. Uh, yeah, I really I'm don't. Actually, already <laughs> moving forward to atheism right now. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Because. Mm, I'm starting to figure out things, and that's why weekly I'm I've been watching the entire show. Is there anything we I'm could do to help you on that journey? Is, is there anything we could do to like maybe a question uh, we could answer for that? Because uh, that's might help me with uh, the show topic of today, which is debating. So for the show topic, um, for now. I cannot yet think of anything, but okay. along the way, maybe. Well, thank you yeah. so much for calling and in, man. Is that it, or do you have anything else? Nothing else. Thank you very much. All right. Have a great day, Denver. Thank you so much for calling in, and uh, hopefully we'll have you come in again. Thank you so much for, for the call. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. That okay. was... Uh, That's one thing... That was Denver. One thing I re really try to avoid... It is the mix of politics and where what atheism is as a whole. Right. But yeah, when it comes to protests... It's not much. Uh, atheism not, really isn't very much. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's it's not a whole... There's nothing really in, in it. It's just a lack of belief in God. That's really all there is. Everything else is something else. It might be consistent with atheism, but it isn't atheism in itself. Which is something I always correct people on. Hmm. Does that make sense? Well, because it's it's all about respect. Like, atheists, we talk about it like we respect. You can respect people, right? But you're not supposed to respect their beliefs. That's also with political stance. Like, I have friends who are on the opposite spectrum of what I quote unquote believe politically, but we don't argue about it. It's just that oh, okay, this person's A, I'm B. You know, once you start learning to understand people and maybe sympathizing or understand why they want that side or the other, then you'll understand. But when it comes to religion, I, I just understand that people are indoctrinated or some friends need to hold on to something or like we talked about it before that some friends are trapped because of their situation when it comes to living arrangements or, you know, staying with their parents and stuff like that. I would have to disagree with your second point on those. I agree with the other ones. The only one I disagree mm -hmm. with is that these people need it. I think they might say that. Like, I've met people who will say mm -hmm. something along the lines of, oh, if I didn't believe in God, I'd go around raping and murdering people. I don't really believe yeah. them. I yeah. don't think they're being sincere when they say that. Um, because I said that when I was a Christian. 
Um, mm-hmm. And I don't do that So, <laughs> as an atheist. And so I really find it hard to believe. And I really don't think, and this is one of those things that's like, uh, it may, maybe I'm oversimplifying or maybe I'm beating it too much. But um, one of the things that I, that I hear a lot is, you know, oh, you know, we're we've figured it out but let the little people have their religious beliefs you know they need it you know i don't think that's that's so insulting to them i know you don't mean it that way i know that's not you but i'm saying i i I hear people say it that way and it bothers me so much and i really don't think that we should stick to that mindset i don't think anybody needs it i think people Mm -hmm. use it i think some people might think they need it but if they understood reality well enough i don't think they would need it and i don't think they do ultimately Hmm. well my point in that area is because i have some friends who have been well they're they're recovered addicts and Mm -hmm. what they did was they replaced the drugs with religion and just like in prison how a lot of people in prison are religious yeah is because they're that's that that's what fills their day that's what what fills the void right. of what would have been crime, what would have been drugs. So they they heavily rely on that. Like, yes, they are better people because they're living in that fear that um, an invisible entity is watching over their every move and rewarding them. So they're, therefore, they continue performing or behaving at a certain uh, level to adhere to that. And I think some of them do need it. I don't think so. It's, it's very. Yeah, I don't think so. You know. I think I think the reason I I disagree. The reason I disagree so strongly on that, and I will explain it, is because I think mm-hmm. that those people might be being given shitty tools to work with. I think if we True. figured True. out yes. what is what is it about what they're doing that is actually preventing them from drinking again or whatever, is it the fact that something is watching them? Maybe. But nothing is actually watching them. Is it the maybe the community aspect where they go back every week to AA or whatever? Maybe that's it. So maybe we should be doing a better job providing secular versions of these things, which now they're becoming more prominent. And we should do a better mm-hmm. job of teaching people that they actually are empowered. They are the ones with the power to stop this. They don't need some divine agency to hold them back. Um, I agree. Yes. Uh, maybe you, you know, can't. AA, AA uses. Yeah. Well, no, no, I was going to say maybe they can't specifically do it just on their own, but they do have the power, Mm -hmm. and that power comes from the community that they're with, the friends that they keep, the people that they have around them, and that's where the power comes from, too. It comes from their own understanding that they are the ones who, loosely, I'm going to use the word, choose to continue doing this um, and and can make that choice to turn their life around to at least start that process, even though it may be a long, difficult process, they at least have that choice to start that process. Um, and then we should yeah, but not... here, here's um, anyway, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. My point, my point no, in, no, this, in this, in this argument, well, not argument in this discussion is um, if you notice a lot of rehab facilities are government run or sometimes they're run by basically Christians and Catholics. And even AA, they have the 12-step program, yeah. which includes letting go and letting God take over. And So when the, the right. program is effective, it's attributed to the religion that's associated with it. And right. that's one thing that I think we have to uh, focus on in a secular community is that I have never heard of a secular group that has organized uh, that sort of treatment. Right. For people who are dependent, there there are drug treatments. And, there are AA treatments that are secular, but they're not AA. Um, I'd have to look up what they're specifically called. Uh, well, maybe there is one that's called AA, secular AA, but it's not. I don't know if that's here in the Philippines, but they do have it in the U.S. and I think in the U.K. and yeah, probably I've, I've other never countries. Heard, I've never ever heard that here in the Philippines. Okay, right. what happens is. More often than not, like when when friends get out of rehab and they get their their lives, quote unquote, together, they they change. They become super duper 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 religious and really really tied on to, quote unquote, what saved them. 
Right. So I, I don't blame them for that because they are better. They they are better people. I know. I don't blame them either. They, I think they were indoctrinated into it by the AA group. Yes. That they think that this is the only way to do it. And AA, by the way, mm. is noted for its ineffectiveness. Um, but what's interesting is yeah, that the you, steps. <laughs> you can't get good statistics from them because AA deliberately makes it so that if you fail, it's your fault, not AA's fault. So only the successes uh -huh. are counted. So it's one big sharpshooter fallacy where they're mm. only pointing to the success rate of the people who stayed with the program. It's like, well, that's a little selective, don't you think? How many people dropped out of the program? How many people failed to meet the standards of the program? How many people never got past step two or three? It's like, uh, it's, it's crazy that they can count so many successes, like a 95% success rate, because they ignore all the failures, um, if, or most of the failures. Uh, there might be some that they include. But yeah, that's... They get away with it. It's an ineffective way of treating your your alcoholism. It's basically flipping a coin as to whether or not it's going to work for you. It depends on how gullible you are into being susceptible to these beliefs and ideas. It has nothing to do with any real mechanism in AA that's actually preventing you from doing anything. At best, you have a good community and friend structure in that, which may help you prevent yourself from doing it. But it's not the religion that's doing it. John knows this. I'm just speaking on top of him. But John knows that there's it's not the religion that's actually preventing it. And there's no Definitely. God that's stopping them from drinking. It's them stopping them. Uh, they just haven't been told yeah. to recognize it. And that's where we've done them a disservice because we need to empower them. We need to tell them, yes, this is you. You are the one who has the power to stop this. You have the power to decide exactly. for yourself. And that's where secular AAs or secular um, rehab works better, in my opinion. Because then what happens mm. if what happens if one of these people who is very, very religious suddenly starts to question and doubt their belief and they become an atheist? Oh, no, they might actually become a fucking alcoholic now because their support structure is gone. It disappeared. It's like, um, mm -hmm. yeah. and they might go back to it. So as soon as the religion crumbles, it's like a big house of cars just going to blow away as soon as the first wind comes by um anyway yeah like i had a i had a cousin and they were required there was every day where there was bible reading well passage reading not bible reading because even he told me he said I, I never read the whole bible but he memorized his passages that were fed into their mind and into his mind and it was repetitive that it became it became a habit to use that particular verse to kind of like center himself mm -hmm. it's like it's like meditation yeah so it became a habit for him i do meditation like now he's an atheist again but for for the for the longest time he was he found himself repeating those words to himself to kind of like remind him to ground him again that's why so, i think it's very it's it's a weird situation to be in where the only way you can kick the habit is by being religious. This is what's so interesting about ironic. the. This is what's so interesting about this. These groups like AA, and maybe you already picked up on it, but a lot of these groups are actually using some real demonstrable techniques, like the one you're talking about. Which, in this case, that would be called um, uh, positive affirmations, which actually do help people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Surprisingly, I actually was able to yeah. to change my own brain chemistry over a long period of time by telling myself that I'm important and that I'm special and that I matter. And that after a while, I actually started to believe it, even though I didn't believe it when I first started saying it to myself every day. And it's it's almost like uh, that quote from Hitler, which is like, if you tell a lie long enough and loud enough, eventually people will believe it. Well, yeah, it's true even if you do it to yourself, apparently. And there is actually a psychological component to it. And it's called a, psych uh, uh, it's called a uh, positive affirmation, um, where you tell yourself something really... Um, that you want to achieve and you just keep telling it to yourself and you try to be sincere. You look in a mirror and you earnestly say it. Yes, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Like, and that actually can get you to eventually doing it um, without you realizing it. Um, why? Um, and so a lot of these, uh, a lot of these organizations like AA might adopt some actual psychological techniques that help people. But, the disservice is done when they start saying that, but this is all working because there's a magic man in the sky who makes it work. Like that's the kind of shit that 
<laughs> that's the kind of shit that just undermines all of it. Um, but uh, maybe that's just me. But I, I don't know. I, yeah, I'm, and, and I hate use, AA. They use, they use the iconography in, in rehabs where it's run by nuns. It's run by nuns. And then every single room has a crucifix, has a Bible. <laughs> So even even in in isolation, you're you're kind of trapped with that. That's why it's kind of like prison. That's why in prison the religious rate really really goes high, because if you want to talk to anyone, it's like oh we have a pastor that you can talk to. Oh you 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 want to talk about your emotions and you're afraid to talk with the inmates, we have a brother or you know we have a priest here that you can talk to. You can confess to them. So that becomes you know and they open up. Uh, and they're very vulnerable. And when you're vulnerable, that's when ideas can be presented to you. And, and I won't I say um, I won't say there's no value to any of that because there is value to like mm. confessing to a priest. You know, it's it's like getting it off your chest, even if it's not actually doing yes. anything meaningful in terms yes. of talking to a god or whatever. It is getting it off your chest at a minimum. And so I can understand the value in that. I just. I can't get around the fact that there's just that underlying bullshit that just permeates through all of it. Um, so yeah, yeah that, that hammers, so I that just hammers don't want... the point. Yeah, the people, some people do need it. I, I, I can't take that away. No, I I don't agree. I, I I can't I can't take that away from them, for them, but not the process. But you know, people who. Have, oh no no no! Uh, let me let me clarify. I'm not saying we take mm-hmm. it away from them. I'm just saying I don't think they really need it. I think that if they were to spend more time with secular groups and secular organizations, they would discover that in fact they do not need it. I agree. Yeah, I, yeah. And I'm I not. I'm not saying I would take it from them. <laughs> it it would be a really really awesome thing if right. us can organize something like a a group. Because I'm pretty sure, if not our listeners, but amongst the thousands in the group, I'm sure there are people who are struggling not just with atheism but with some form of addiction. And maybe that's an avenue for some members who are um, literate in psychology and in self-help and mental health who can probably step up and create something for the community. And I would say that that's a great idea. And that's what we're actually trying to do with groups like Recovering from Religion and the the, uh, Secular... uh, therapy project here in the Philippines, which we are currently still working on, um, which is going to be a, it's kind of going to be like 10, 20 years <laughs> process at least to even get it off the ground. Probably. Uh, this is step it's one. Be a while. Step one is try to spread atheism a bit more around the country. Step two is actually find secular therapists in the country. Uh, currently of which I found zero. Um, mm-hmm. I, th- I think there's maybe a handful but most of them aren't either licensed or not practicing or don't want to be a part of that this endeavor. Um, so I don't I'm not going to obviously call them out or be like, oh, how dare you? But, you know, it's their choice. So um, <laughs> yeah. but if we can get a secular therapy project going, something like a secular AA would follow right along with that. So consider going to patreon.com slash potas Inc. to help us raise money to get some secular therapists going in this country. We need help with that. And I really want to see that come to fruition. We want to we want to push the envelope on what we can do with this uh, this show and this uh, group in general. Uh, John, what do you think? What do you think about secular therapy? Yeah, because. I think it's cool because at, uh, imagine being an atheist and then like, okay, I I know, admit I have a problem, but I refuse to, to take help from people who will try to this is basically argue with me throughout. You know, you, you know the the peril or the downfalls of religion and it, it must even suck more to be an atheist and then be thrown into a rehab that you're, you're already familiar with the process, no? that they will try the best to indoctrinate you. So from very go, there's resistance from the patient, the person looking for help, and the people administering the help. Unlike when it's a level playing ground where you guys like, okay, you're an atheist, you admit you have a problem, an, addic- an addiction, don't worry. This is uh, a secular, we're not going to force you to... You know, we're not going to indoctrinate you in anything. We'll treat this together, logically, um, rationally, and we will go through the psychological steps. Yeah, and I agree you know, that, um, like that 
I agree with that first half of step one where it's, well, we admit that we have a problem. However, that's not what step one actually is. <laughs> step one is admit that we are powerless um, over mm-hmm. our problem. Um, so in some cases, it may be step one. But uh, this the versions that I've been looking at and that I've seen all throughout are always we admit that we are powerless. And I don't think that's a good first step at all. I think admitting we have a problem is a good first step. I don't think admitting you're powerless is a good first step because to me, the whole point is obviously to empower them. So if I get them to say they're powerless, then I'm not really doing them any favors. Um, came to timber two has came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Uh, three made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves, admit to God, to ourselves, and to other human being uh, the exact nature of our wrongs. We're entirely, oh, we're, this is an apostrophe missing, entirely ready to have God remove all these defect defects of character, humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. Eight, made a list of all persons we had harmed, became willing to make amends to them all. Nine, made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Uh, I'm okay with those two steps. Ten, continued to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Eleven, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him. I don't know what the fuck that has to do with recovery. Um, Twelve, having have a spiritual awakening as a result. That doesn't have anything to do with recovery either. So of the steps that I agree with, I, I, I came away with um, maybe four, eight, nine, and ten. That's it. <laughs> that's, the, that's my uh, four-step program that, I, that I'm in agreement with of their... 12 so there you go uh i i couldn't agree with most of the other yeah. ones they're a complete yeah disaster. that's why um there there's there are aa groups which have adjusted to those uh the 12 steps that's why the 12, 12 steps have been called out uh you guys can find resources online even on youtube of why yeah the 12 steps are flawed but yeah, if we can, if the community can create a, a program, an effective program, because you can create any fucking program, but a, an effective program that does yield results in a fair manner, I, I think that's worth looking into. It's a lot of legwork, man. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It is a lot of legwork. And maybe, maybe even me, just with my limited knowledge of psychology, maybe I can at least find somebody who's like a psych student or something to... Um, participate in um, in like group therapy sessions where we're just kind of talking um, and just sharing our feelings and our thoughts and whatever is bothering us, you know. And maybe we don't even have to have a specific AA group. It could just be a mental health club, you know, um, where we're not giving any professional advice. We're just all there to support each other. And that might be enough. That might be all that we need to start with uh, to kind of push through into a secular therapy entire thing but right now i don't i'm not interested in doing any of that shit with coronavirus still going on so uh, <laughs> maybe an online group would oh, be nice really? but yeah an online group it's basically a support group there you go a support, yeah. a support group yeah a support can, group for you can enter anonymously and you know so there's push chain there there is there is a chain you know like uh, seeing a friend disappear and then everyone's talking in corners and in dark places that, oh, he's in the ad. Oh, he's, you know, he's lost. You know, then it becomes a uh, dialogue cheesemist and people hate cheesemist for being, you know, the topic of the cheesemist because it's embarrassing. Yeah, I heard I heard most of that. Uh, and, I, and I think I agree. I want to probably move off this topic for now i think and then <laughs> let's well we've been on it for a while so i want to wrap up with uh maybe our last couple of comments because we're coming up on the end of the hour and we got a couple comments in facebook one of them i'd like to go over from daniel francisco who's commented before i think he says do you know now we have an astro i think he means astrophysicist major on gravity yeah i did read about that yes um cool <laughs> um 
I don't know. I've, I've, I love physicists. I love scientists. I think they do a great thing. But when I read astrophysicist major on gravity, I like fell asleep halfway through saying it. Like that's just, I don't know. It just bores me to think of studying gravity. Like, <laughs> maybe I'm crazy, but the more power to him for, uh, for his, uh, for his success. Sorry. I had to get up and move around for a second. Uh, we have another couple of comments here. Um, she's talking about same sex issues here, uh, with the people who are against same sex marriage or same sex, uh, relations. I think it stems from religion. Or this is from Makisi Malone. I think it stems from religion being a controlling tool for the people. And back in the old days, having same sex relationships in that era, that the amount of children, a town village tribe is, is, is views as something favorable. Same-sex relationship most likely be frowned upon, and in order to discourage the behavior religions may have adopted to say that homosexuality is wrong. But that just how I th- that's just how I think almost all religions seem to hate homosexuality. There may be some truth to that, Maki uh, I I don't I, I couldn't possibly I couldn't possibly take the stance that all religions endorsed anti-homosexual views to control people. That is too oversimplified for my brain to allow. Um, I'm okay with the idea that that might have been a motivating factor, um, that controlling people was a motivating factor, but I, I do sincerely think that some of these religions that have these anti-homosexual views were formulated on the back of people who actually believed there was a divine being in the sky or whatever, um, telling them this shit, whether or not, um, it was actually true. (laughs) So it looks like John is actually back. Holy crap. He's been gone for like half an hour, but he's back. So yeah, yeah, yeah I'm back. Is that a different shirt? No, it's shirt. Back. Okay. Banana, right. Okay. Oh, it's the same banana. It's still the atheist nightmare shirt. <laughs> Damn, banana I didn't bring probably. a banana with me. I should have had a banana available for this one. Should have brought a banana. Man, yeah, we talked about yellow. it though in uh in a past in a past episode, how having a lot of children ensures that right. the, the the practice the tradition will be passed on we did so talk about if that. you have a, and i and i agree with you, you whole, i agree with you and makisig that that was probably a motivating factor in making anti-religious stances a prominent religious component i just don't think it's the only one and i think it's too oversimplified to say that but mm-hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah. shut up so you can speak people haven't heard you speak in <laughs> your face for a while so let's do that <laughs> I've just I've just been listening, and we still have comments, right? So we can knock them off, knock I, them out before we um, say goodbye. I think we might be out of comments to read, but I think somebody else is coming in for a call, so we might have a last minute caller on the line. I'm not sure yet, uh, but anyway, let's let's continue down this train of thought until we see if we do or not. Um, ah, so Minoru, Minoru, Min. I'm sorry. Justin, I can never say your name. I apologize. Uh, he says, Patas have a project called Patas Mental Health Support Group that is being handled by a professional psych. Uh, this is news to me. I don't know why I never heard of this, even after speaking to both of you, Justin and Richard, for months on Secular Therapy Project. Literally the first I've ever heard of this. So maybe we should talk more about this for next week's show to get a little more background. Yeah. Um, also, Justin Richard. I, I'm, I'm uh, very happy. If you're watching, we do have a caller who might be on the line. I'm just going to drag him in. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, um, see, I'm glad we talked about it. We went off tangent a bit. And it's yeah. nice to know that there is I agree. a group now within the group. Who do we have on the line? Who's here? Who are we talking to? It says Mel Munz something. I can't. Oh, they disappeared. Oh. Oh. Mel. There you go. Mel, Mel you're here. Mangano. You can unmute yourself. I don't know. I don't know who this is. The call screeners didn't screen this person. I'm just trying to see. Who the, they just popped in, and I thought, well, the show's almost over. Let's see who this is. So, uh, Mel Manzano, if you're there, unmute yourself and speak. What's going on? You're on the show with uh, John and Ben. You're not talking. All right. So, uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. Hi. Who do we have here? Who, who's I'm speaking? Who are we speaking to? I'll translate for Benjamin. Yeah, you guys talk. Go ahead. Come again. I know. I know. 
Well, hindi kayo naniwala na. Just problema nyo. Oh, Ben, he's asking, why don't why don't we believe in God? What's our problem? What's our problem? I don't have a problem. Uh, Mel, ano anong pinapaniwala mo? What do you believe in? Uh, Christiano ka ba? Uh, Muslim or Mormon or Jehovah's Witness? Ano ka, Mel? Yeah, I'll try ano to. Uh, before you go Sorry, on, Mel. Catholic. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you can. Christian, can you understand yeah. me, Mel? Can you understand what I'm saying? Just, yeah, yeah, yes or no will be fine. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. Okay, he does. He does. Okay, so I'll try to may say this. May nag-post sa group namin. But may nag post yung mga ganito sa group namin. Ha? Naimit yung group namin. Pag-post yung sa group this namin is... yung ganito. Sabi uh... ba na sabi sa Psalm 14, and the pool said to himself, there is no God? Mel, Mel. Kami po ay ang mga host dito. Hindi po kami nagpo-post kasi we're here in the program. Right. Andito po kami. Hindi kami nagpo-post sa group niyo. We're not posting in your group. We're here having well, a conversation. Kung may nag-post, kung may nag-post sa group niyo, hindi kami yon kasi nandito kami. Di ba? But I will Wala say kami, we don't have time. I'll go ahead then. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to just say that um, he asked Mel if you're listening, uh, why don't we believe in God? What's our problem? And my problem would be you haven't done anything to convince me. Why should I believe in a God? So my question is back to you. Why should we believe in a God? Uh, who made you, Ben? Who made me? My parents had sex. So, who made the world, Ben? Uh, I don't think anyone made the world. The world is the result so, of natural kayo, processes. <laughs> Sorry, John. I'm not laughing at this person. I'm just uh, he laughing says at that, you translating. He for says me. that you, you don't believe that, uh, don't believe, but you don't have any basis on that belief. Said what? Uh, you don't believe. But you don't have any basis. Where's where's your basis on life? On on ba basically my, everything. My basis. I don't need a basis for any of that. The the burden of proof is on the people who are claiming there is a God. I am justified in rejecting that position until someone demonstrates mm. that the God is real. Uh, and until that happens, I am completely reasonable in saying that I don't believe it. And so. The fact that I don't have an answer for where did the universe come from or how did the world form doesn't mean there is a God because that's an argument from ignorance fallacy. And an argument from ignorance, all that means is that uh, I am believing that this is the answer until someone proves it wrong. And that is not a reasonable way to go about thinking about the world around us. The way in which we should approach uh, these sorts of issues is to say, uh, okay, the world exists. Why does it exist? Let's go out and investigate. If you just say the world exists, it exists because God. You haven't really answered anything. All you've done is say, here's something I don't know. I'm plugging in God as an answer, and that solves the problem. So uh, that would be my response. Uh, hopefully that helped. I don't know how much of that you understood. but uh, um, Sorry, John, your, your camera's frozen and you're cutting out yeah. again. So. Anyway, thank you so much, Mel, for your call, and we're just about done for the day, and we appreciate you calling in, and thank you so much, and you can call in again next week if you'd like, and we'll do some more, um, but un unfortunately, I can't understand you, and I don't know how much of me you're understanding. I'm happy to have you have a conversation with John sometime, but John isn't really understandable right now either, so <laughs> we're going to just move on for today. <laughs> I was gonna let you like I was gonna let you rail into him for a few minutes, but then you cut out and your camera cut out. So it's like, well, I guess we're done. All right. <laughs> and it's, it's, the, it's the usual um, comment of why you don't you get to leave and right if if you don't believe anything, then what's the point? Yeah, it was a it was an ontological argument essentially. It was um, you know mm -hmm. I I exist, therefore God kind of thing. Um, that's kind of what it was. And yeah. I actually, I respect ontological arguments more than I respect something like the Aristotelian proof, because to me, that's just navel gazing. At least the ontological arguments are trying to say, like, you know, 
oh, wow, from our privileged perspective, look at how beautiful all this is. And at least there's something there that I can at least understand and agree with. Like, yeah, the world is beautiful. I agree. It, it has this sort of uh, quality to it that seems like it might be designed for us. I agree. It's not, but I agree that it looks that way. And so uh, that's kind of where I, I respect those arguments more, even though I think they're monumentally wrong. <laughs> Um, yeah. I definitely well, what I find he, look what at I the find trees. humorous is that he he was complaining that our our show is on their Facebook page. I have no idea what page <laughs> oh, he was talking about. I don't know either. I don't share the page to places usually. That's usually what the uh, admins or fans do. I don't have control over what they do. This is a public page. Anybody can yeah. share this anywhere. So if you don't want it on that group's page, tell the admins of that group to take it down. That's not our problem. But uh, thank yeah, you. You can report. <laughs> you can report it. <laughs> yeah, but thank yeah, you. That, that, I, I'm curious. I n- I never got to ask him what page was it posted in, so that we could check out the comments and stuff. Oh, I can find out. He, he seemed. I can find. I can look seemed, at the uh, stats. Yeah, he did seem angry. Angry. I couldn't even so understand. Angry. I couldn't even understand him, and he seemed angry to me. Um, so I was like, "Yeah, this guy doesn't yeah. seem very <laughs> pleased." So let's try to approach it yeah, nicely. He, you know. He started off like really uh, instead of just asking nicely, it's like, why, why right. are you in our page? Yeah, I know, but that's cool though. Yeah, I'm, I'm thanks hope for sharing. Um, whoever shared it, <laughs> I hope you at least got through to him a little bit. I don't know how much he understood of me, but I hope maybe you some of the stuff you said might have clicked with him a little bit. Like, you know, hey, we're nice people, we're not here to be mean, you know, that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, we're doing our show, we're not the ones putting it on different pages because we're on a live show. And if I were having fucking audio visual problems throughout the whole episode, <laughs> I don't think we have time to go on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, luckily, the show has been not completely rife with problems today. Besides the issues with mm-hmm. the Internet, which we can't really control, there's not been a lot of technical problems today, surprisingly. So, uh, Mucky Sieg Malone said, sorry for oversimplifying your... <laughs> I'm working right now on listening to your program or while listening to your program. That's fine, Mike. I'm not blaming you for oversimplifying anything. Uh, I understand that you probably don't mean it or intend it to sound like an oversimplification. I just like to clarify that so when other people hear me talk, they understand what my position actually is. Uh, so that later on down the road, if somebody watches this, that they don't call in and go, you said this is an absolute. This is the how it is. And that's oversimplified. Now they know that that's what I think. So um, I, I like to be very careful with my words because I know that my words on the internet live forever. Um, I like to be very deliberate with what I think and what I say. And that's why sometimes I'll shut up and just think for a while before I answer a question or I will think before I respond to a uh, statement. So <laughs> anyway, any last words, John, before we take you out, before you get what you got coming to you? I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself. It just sounded uh- funny. I don't know. I, I'm having a good weekend. Hopefully, uh, we're going to be hearing news from the president on yeah. Monday. Whether we're going to go back to GCQ and all that, it's going to change our lives once again. But we will be online. So this is the new norm. Right, where Where is GCQ uh, happening? In Manila again? Uh, we don't know yet. But there is a possibility. Oh, they're going to be the, talking the, about it. The spike. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a spike. Exactly. Huge spike. Big spike right now in Manila. Not going well. Um so, yeah, there may be another GCQ coming up. I'm not I, – I think I read about that, too. I, I didn't know if it had already – I thought you were saying it already passed. I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> um, Monday, Monday. We'll find out on Monday. So right. next Saturday might be a different story, different conversation. And, yeah, at 9 p.m., there's that live broadcast. Right. Yeah, the, so the, the live support. broadcast, go check it out. That is – um down there below, it's LGBT Bus Pride Month celebration. Go look up LGBT Bus on Facebook if you're not familiar with it. Uh, just type in exactly like you see on the screen there, and it will take you straight to the page where you can go and watch them live. And I don't know if there's I don't know if there's any sort of live event where you can actually join publicly, but maybe that's a different thing. But anyway, follow the page, ask them what's going on because I haven't a clue. Um, but I think is that it, John? Are we done for the day? Gosh, two hours uh, just flies by. Yeah. Yup, yup. I think that's it for us. All right. Well, thank you Another all s- so much for coming. Another great day, right? Another successful run. Yup, yup. We're, Thanks we're, for the callers. <laughs> we're speed running atheism. All right. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> 
Let's do some credit roll. <laughs> 